What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video we've got part 1 of the Jungle Cup Battle of Spice, featuring 12 insanely spicy teams, which of course means there will be a part 2 coming very soon, so if you want to see that video tomorrow, make sure you leave a like on this video right now, if this video gets 750 likes in 24 hours, I will upload part 2 tomorrow. I also want to remind everyone that I'm trying to hit 30k subscribers before the end of the season and if I do reach that milestone, as a lot of people have requested it, I will do a live stream most likely doing a spicy roulette wheel against my subscribers, so if you want to see that and if you want a chance to battle me, you know exactly what to do. We'll obviously have to see how it goes but that may open the door for more live streams on this channel so definitely just hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Now I did mention that I was going to be a bit more strict when it came to submissions with under leveled or single move Pokemon, I want to see full dedication to the random and wacky Pokemon you bring, so certainly submissions that featured multiple severely underleveled or single move Pokemon, regardless of the team you ran, unfortunately didn't make it into the video. But there were a couple of teams that had maybe one underleveled Pokemon, but it was part of a triple XL team, and the other two Pokemon were fully maxed out, so I gave a little bit of leeway, or maybe a team that had three legendary Pokemon, which are obviously very expensive to double move, and only two of them were double moved. With that clarification out of the way, let's get into the question of the day. What do you think has been the most forgiving themed cup that we've ever had when it comes to being able to run spice? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so heading into the first battle, kicking things off with a triple level 50 team, Purified Gullet leading into a shiny Galissapod, gonna say swap into our Shadow Leap here, and the opponent's gonna fire off a charge move straight away, I believe that was an x it does a lot of damage there, but we bait out the Vigroth, which is really important for this team, we're now gonna go for a Grass Knot, dealing about 50% of their health, just over that, but now we can align our Gullet to this Vigroth, and go for a huge Mud Slap farm down, so gonna no shield of course, you guys have already seen already my Sandy Gust video, well XL Gullet, is in a very similar position here, resisting or double resisting everything Vigoroth can possibly throw. We're going to take the next charge move there, we can go for the mud that farm down, and we're also running return for coverage, so let's see if we're going to throw it here. The opponent comes in with a Mantine, so we're full sending the return here. Do they respect the damage? Unfortunately they do, but it doesn't matter, they are core broken by this Alolan Geodude. We're going straight for the rock side here, that's the great thing about Alolan Geodude, it gets to that rock side incredibly fast, and the opponent just concedes the match there. So going into the next battle, we've got a shiny Zoroark. The opponent's going to say swap into a Dunsparce. Unfortunately, Dunsparce completely core breaks this team here. Of course, being a normal type, resisting, well, double resisting the Shadow Claw damage from the Zoroark, and then also hitting for at least super effective or double super effective damage up against our backline. But we're going to swap. We'll make a very nice catch there, catching a double resisted drill run onto our Shadow Zartu. And at this point, they are unfortunately going to be able to outpace us here. Are we going to shield this up? We are going to shield. We can now go for an air slash farm down but we are two shields down they come back in with the talent flame we're gonna fire off the airy lay straight away honestly i'm not really sure how we're gonna be able to win this game here but we will make it to another airy lace before they get the full incinerate farm down and airy lace is gonna grab both shields straight away back from the talent flame so that is certainly good news at this point we're gonna come in with our fletchinder and then we swap we make a sacrificial swap here but not only that i believe this is a cmp tie and it is which is perfect play foul play doesn't quite take them out there but it doesn't matter we put them into range where one steel wing will take them out and they've got a ferrothorn in the back and fletchinder has decided to just completely fly off the screen but it doesn't matter flame charge double super effective taking out the ferrothorn and we're able to take that game into the next battle, we've got Shadow Galvantula into Altaria. Gonna say swap since we've got two better responses to Altaria in the back. And we bait out a Clodside, which really isn't that good of a response to our Shadow Extra Drill. We go for the draw run, we get a shield, and then the opponent over farms there, or they're just a bit slow to get to the next charge move. Allow us to make it to a second draw run. They do let it go through, they barely hang on, so at this point, we're definitely gonna shield this up. They actually bait with a Sludge Bomb, doesn't really matter as we do get the Mario Shot farm down anyways. And we come out with a little bit of residual energy. They're now gonna come in with a Scar which is fine with us. We can farm to the back to back rock sides. We actually farmed to one before, but it doesn't matter. We will make it to rock side number two, and rock side from this range will definitely take out the Skarmory. So the opponent will be using their final shield, and at this point, we just have to let the extra draw go down. Going to come in with the Shadow Cavantula, and at this point, we are going to start shielding, use our final shield, then go for the Brave Bird. We can now come in with the Mammo Swine, and we are going to over farm here. Unfortunately, the opponent does actually make it to the charge move, though. We over farm just slightly too much, and now we have to 
come back in with the Galvantula. We are once again going to overfarm massively here, throwing just before they make it to the next charge move. Of course, Discharge from this range takes out the Altaria, and one more Volt Switch takes out the Skarmory, and we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we're going to see Vigoroth in the lead. They put safe swaps into Altaria, and honestly, we don't have a great response, which is probably why we took quite a while to swap out there. We're going to come in with Vespaquin, tank the charge move. Obviously, Sky Attack going to hit our entire team for super effective damage, but likewise, we can go for a Power Gem, and Power Gem also hits for super effective damage. But you can see Altaria tanks that very comfortably. Power Gem, not a great move, and Vespaquin also reasonably bulky, so it doesn't do much damage there. We're now definitely going to have to shield our Beedrill. Can we go for a full Poison Jab farm down? It's going to be close but we do get there which is really nice they come back in with vigor off we are going straight for the exit here exit of course gonna deal big damage in this matchup nearly probably 50% of their health in all honesty there and we make it to a second x scissor throwing on the cmp tie winning cmp at this point are we gonna double shield the b drill no nope. gonna let the body slam take us out we come back in with the cherim and we are going straight for a solar beam here do they respect the damage no solar beam does huge damage there it actually puts them into a range where we can fully bullet seed farm them down of course gonna shield the aerial ace here and we should come out with very nearly two weather balls loaded we throw the first one straight away personally i'd like to see us go for the bullet seed first but it doesn't really make a difference here as we still make it to weather ball number two and from this range weather ball will be taken out the vigor off and we're able to take that game we're also heading into the next battle, running a triple Shadow team with Shadow Giraffe Rick in the lead up against Nido Queen. So we are running Confusion, so this is a very positive matchup for us. The opponent choosing to stay in here, so looking like they're just going to no shield probably. But no, they actually shield that up, which is quite strange. At this point, we're going to shield as well. We can go for a full Confusion farm down. The debuff our defense with a Poison Fang, but that's okay. They then come in with Vigor off, so we're just going to stay in here, fire off the next Poison Fang, oh sorry, Psychic Fangs, and now we can just go and let the Giraffe go down. We can come in with a very hard answer to Vigor off in the form of Shadow Golurk. Gonna no shield once again, gonna resist or double resist everything Vigor off can throw. They go for Rock Side, it does do a pretty decent amount of damage here considering we are Shadow, and Golurk isn't the bulkiest Pokemon ever, but they only make it to a Body Slam there, and then they come in with Ferrothorn, but it doesn't matter, as we've got Dynamic Punch for coverage, hitting for huge super effective damage and the opponent just concedes the match. So going into the next battle, we've got Kecleon into Ariados. So uh, Kecleon actually has quite a lot of different charge moves. So we're running Aerial Ace and Flamethrower. So both are going to be super effective in this matchup. Although the opponent will outpace us quite considerably to the first charge move. Going for a lunge. So I do like this play going for the Flamethrower. As this is going to hit much harder than an Aerial Ace. But the opponent is going to shield. Now at this point, I'm not sure I would shield here. Just because they are going to significantly outpace us. And they're actually going to make it to three charge moves before we make it to our second charge move. So we're actually going to double shield our Kecleon. They then swap into Pelipper. We bank a bit of energy there. I think we banked at least an Aerial Ace. And now we come in with the Heliolisk. I think they're only making it to one charge move. So they put a full sense Hurricane, which is resisted damage. But it does make sense as it does do more damage than a Weather Ball. We're now going to go over farm by one Volt Switch. Farm to the back-to-back -back breaking swipes. Unfortunately, the first one doesn't quite get the KO. So firing off that second one straight away. Taking out the Aerial Ace. And they come in with a Dedene now. This is fine. We will make it to a Grass Knot since it looks like the opponent is going for a full Thundershock farm down and Grass Knot grabs the final shield from the opponent so now we swap into our Shinotic. Gonna of course have to let this first move go through. They go for Blade Roth, dealing big damage. Can we make it to the Sludge Bomb? No, the opponent makes it to another charge move here, but it's just a discharge. We hang on, we make it to the Sludge Bomb and of course this hits for super effective damage. It will be taken out to Dene and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we got Poipol in the lead up against a Wigglytuff. So a very nice lead matchup for us. The opponent is going to swap out eventually into an Acid Weeping Bell, which is also under leveled. So I'm not really sure if they meant to bring in this Pokemon. Maybe they've tried to click on their Victory Bell and they misclicked. Or maybe they're running like Auto Wrecked. I don't know. But either way, we can go straight Fell Stinger, boosting our attack by two stages. And then they come in with a Venusaur. So at this point, honestly, I'd probably just go straight Fell Stinger. Just keep on ramping up the attack. We know that Poipole is in a prime position to just fully 1v3 the entire team here. Instead, we full send this large bomb, which might be a mistake. As now, the opponent does, of course, correctly shield that up. We're going to go for another Fell Stinger. Fell Stinger grabs the final shield from the opponent. We can just safely shield this up. And we are now three stage boosted in our attack. They swap back into Wigglytuff, but we can go for a full Poison Jab farm down. And who needs teammates? Poipole certainly doesn't. We're able to 1v3 an entire team, despite the rest of our team being quite spicy as well. 
But into the next battle, and a bit of an interesting one here. We've got Shadow Articuno and then two Galarian birds in the back. So, a bit strange there. I guess this trainer probably just doesn't have the Galarian Articuno. Otherwise, it would have probably made more sense to run that. But either way, we are going to go and use a shield here. Go for the full counter farm down. We've got quite a lot of energy here, but probably only making it to one charge move. And I actually really like this play here. Just going for close combat, as this will give them less farm. Hopefully, Articuno can outpace them to the charge move, but unfortunately not. The thing is, we will actually live this though, so we're gonna no shield, they swap into a Charizard though, unfortunately not running Ancient Power, and Ancient Power would have one shot them as they no shield there, but it doesn't really matter, as we can go for the full wing attack farm down, and just for the sake of it, we're gonna go for the BM with the Brave Bird, at like 1 HP remaining, and the opponent has probably just thrown their phone up against the wall there, we take out the Shadow Dragonite, and we're able to take that game. Going into the next battle, and I'm not really sure why this battle is in a slightly weird colour, but it doesn't really matter too much. We're going to lead with the Rotom Freeze Frost. I don't actually know what it's called. It's a fridge. Uh, it's part ice as well. We're going straight for the Blizzard here. And Blizzard, if this does connect, will do huge damage. Unfortunately, the opponent does shield that up. Now, we've actually got two really good answers to the Charge Bug in the back. So, we do eventually swap into our Shadow Extra Drill. Go for a Drill Run, dealing big damage up against the Quagsire. And at this point, we are going to shield this as we will outpace them to the next charge. We've the go for Mud Bomb here. We're actually committing to the full Mud Shot Farm down. Unfortunately, they do make it to another charge move, so we have to double shield. Personally, I probably would have thrown a move there, but they come back in with the Charger Bug. We don't have any shields remaining, but they go for Discharge there. Honestly, if they just went for Exorcism, they might have been able to take us out there. But anyways, we go for a Rock Side, grabbing that final shield. The opponent then swaps, makes a nice catch onto Skarmory, catching Rock Side number two, but that's fine. This will just guarantee that a Flamethrower will KO and we're gonna fire it off straight away of course we are gonna triple resist the spark damage but we don't resist X scissor so let's see if we can tank an X scissor from this range the opponent does outpace us to the charge move X scissor doesn't quite take us out there and we can of course make it to flamethrower number two with our shadow gabi flamethrower takes out the charger bug and we're able to take that game so going into the next battle, we've got Fletchinder into Wigglytuff now. I'm assuming we're running Steel Wing, so this is a really nice matchup for us. Once again, Fletchinder just clearly doesn't like staying on the screen. Doesn't really matter, though. We can just go for a Flame Charge. Flame Charge, of course, gonna ramp up our attack. But it doesn't do that much damage there. But we're gonna swap. We can actually move onto our Alolan Raticate. And we catch a Dark Pulse, which is resisted damage. So that's really nice. And as well, of course, Raticate not gonna have the best matchup up against the Wigglytuff. So nicely played there. They now go for Airy Lace. But you can see Raticate pretty bulky. Air Ace not going to do much damage whatsoever, but we're going straight for the return, and return does big damage to the Mandibus, unfortunately doesn't quite take them out there, but it doesn't really matter. They go for another Air Ace, they now swap into a Shadow of Bomber Snow, we're just going to go straight for a Crunch here, and honestly, Fletchinder is going to be able to sweep this game very nicely. At this point, honestly, we might just uh, sacrifice the Dolive here, and yes, that's exactly what we do. The opponent is going to finally fire off a charge move here. Honestly, we might tank this. They go for weather, but we do live it, and we make it to a seed bomb. This doesn't really matter. It might grab a shield, though, so let's see. The opponent is going to let it go through. Doesn't make a difference here. We can just safely shield this up. They've got Wigglytuff in the back. That can do literally nothing up against our Fletchinder. We will be able to outpace them to two charge moves here, so we go straight for the Flame Charge. Flame Charge is, of course, going to grab that final shield from the opponent. We can just safely shield up the Icy Wind here. The opponent is going to go for the Icy Wind, debuffing our attack once again but it doesn't matter we easily make it to a fly and fly will be taking out the wheelie tough we're able to steel wing farm down the mandibuzz and we're able to take that game into next game, we got Fur Fruit up against a Swampert, so this is actually a pretty decent matchup for us, assuming we can land a Grass Knot, but the opponent might know about the coverage this season, since Fur Fruit is pretty decent now that it has access to Sand Attack. They're now going to swap into, I believe that was a Licky Tongue. We're going straight for Surf here. Surf is going to be no shielded by the opponent. We're going to bank a Grass Knot. I like that play, and then swap into Fletchinder, and once again, it looks like Fletchinder uh, just doesn't like to stay on the screen here. Yep, I don't know why that is the case. It doesn't make sense, but it doesn't really matter. We can go for the fly. Fly does big damage up against the Licky Tongue. At this point, we're going to no shield once again here. This body slam is going to get us very low. Can we still get the farm down in time? Yes, we are able to do so. And let's see what the opponent wants to do. 
The opponent's going to come in with a Skarmory. We blind throw the Fly, though, which is really unfortunate. And the opponent is going to call that with just blind throwing the Sky as well. So really nice play from the opponent there. A, bit, a little bit lucky, but that's okay. We're going to go for a Surf, grab a Shield from the opponent. That's not ideal in all honesty, but let's see. Going for a second Surf. Surf should hopefully get them fairly low, but still not that low. We have to swap into our Simi Sage here. And the opponent is going to fire off a Charge Roof. We're, of course, going to have to shield this up. They go for a Sky Attack, and we go for a Crunch here. This should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent. And Crunch is going to grab that final shield, but then they just swap back into Swampert. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And now all we can do here is just let that first move go through, commit to a full Vine Whip farm down, and we will come out with a Crunch loaded to throw into the Skarmory. And that should be game over. I think Crunch should be enough damage to get the KO from this range. It will be close here, but Crunch will be taken out the Skarmory and we're able to take that game. So going into the next battle, we're going to see a Litleo into a Scrafty, so really not good for us. We're going to swap into our Dojuo here, and the opponent comes in with a Talon Flame. So not ideal for us. We're going to go straight for the Drill Peg. Drill Peg does grab a shield, and we do just barely make it to a second Drill Peg here. And Drill Peg, honestly, is going to do big damage in this matchup. We nearly flipped that switch advantage. It was close, but now we're going to come back in with our Let Leo, and we're going to shield this move here. The opponent is going to go and go for a Flame Charge, ramping up their attack, but they don't make it to a second Flame Charge, which is very nice. Then now we're going to come in with the Scrafty. We can go for a Flame Charge of our own. Flame Charge is going to be no shielded, and the opponent does make it to a Charge Reef. At this point, we're going to no shield here. The opponent goes for Acid Spray, though, so we can tank three more counters, make it to another Flame Charge, and Flame Charge will be grabbing the final shield from the opponent, so we come in with our Dodrio. We're going to no shield once again here. The opponent is once again going to go for an Acid Spray, and then they come in with a Shadow Vile Plume. We're going straight for the Brave Bird here. No messing around. Brave Bird easily one-shots the Vile Plume, and we're able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day